All right. All right. And this is our uh, this is our current truck mount. This is a 22 and a half horsepower Honda powered truck mount. <clears throat> it's got a. Uh, yeah, I'll show you in the next slide here. This is a picture of just the tank system on on the unit. Now, Larry, you're one of the few manufacturers that makes a split. Well, one of the very few manufacturers that actually puts all the components on top of the tank. Right. And you're one of, I don't know, one or two that actually splits the tank into both fresh and dirty. Right. The, the recovery that? tank is in front. It runs all the way back to this filter box. Okay. And then from there back is the fresh water tank. And you find it's kind of an equal balance? That doesn't look equal in the photo, but... Well, it's a little bigger. We always have a little bigger recovery tank than we do fresh water tank. And uh, one, thing, one, thing we, one thing that allows us to do this type of horizontal tank is that we have our filter box mounted above the recovery tank. Yeah. And I'll show you a little better picture of that. You, yeah, you use a screw-on filter. Um, the only other company I can think of that does this is Judson, but they, they don't put a filter in, in theirs. It just, just goes straight to the blower. Yeah, they had a little mesh screen, I think, in some of their units, but it was uh, uh, prone to clog up. So who makes the thing to do? And you will just snap those right out. Right. Yeah, that's a, we have an aircraft certified welder that does all our aluminum work so they deliver the box and frame and then someone at your facility mounts all the components the right they assemble everything on it and dare i ask how many truck mounts a month or year you are uh, putting out there uh, we we probably put out two to three you know in the slow season a little more than that in the you know in this summer months what's your most popular unit uh the most popular one is uh one one step larger than the one i'm showing here it's a uh, this is a 22 and a half horsepower and then the next step up is the uh 34 horsepower from 22 to 34 huh? That's right. a big wow. step. so 34 is spinning what blower uh the 34 is spinning a uh 45 blower. It's a 4MR blower, actually. Are you a cat or a general? We're a general pump. General? Yeah. This is one thing I wanted to show about the blower. Uh, this is this is a uh, infrared camera study when Suterbilt went from the MP series blowers to the MR series blowers. And what they did was separate the uh, gearbox from the rest of the blower. All the heat on the original MP, the heat's generated, of course, by the lobe spinning inside the, the chamber. But that gets transferred out to the gear case where the gears are. And the gears are the limiting factor in what a blower can actually produce. So they moved they move the gearbox out a half inch away from the rest of the blower, and that enabled the gearbox to run much cooler, as shown by the the uh, lighter colors in this infrared yeah. view. So how does that benefit us? Then? To go up to 16 inches of actual lift. So they can run it faster? And they can run it faster, and they can run it under greater lift at the same time. Is that like a dual chamber for the fluids or is there like uh, grease zerks on that yet, Larry, on your, like your front? Um, well, they, they make it both ways. Okay. You know, we use, we use the grease search because we like, we like grease in those roller bearings. Sure. Kind of like on a, you know, a vehicle typically uses right. that type of grease, but you can, get times, with, you can get them with, you can get them with a dual splash system, which has oil in front and, this is the front, and this is the rear, actually. Yeah. But you say you prefer the grease, huh? Why is that? Well, 
we think it does a better job of keeping those front bearings uh, lubricated. And they they worked on the grease system a little bit. It's not quite as messy as it used to be. So that's your most popular unit with a with a three four. I think a lot of your competition or thirty four, they're stepping up to you know forty six, forty seven, forty eight blowers. You don't feel the need to bump your blower up, or you feel that running it faster. We do, we do have a number five unit. It has a uh, it has a forty horse Kohler and a number five blower in this area, and that's a that's the largest unit we make. That's typically used by people that want to dual wand every day, or use, uh, you know, used by flood restorers or restoration companies. One thing I wanted to point out on this slide is that we uh, we fabricate our own stainless steel manifolds, exhaust headers for our units, and we have those. We have those uh, enclosed with a tube, a tube insulator that actually expands and contracts to go go over the uh, flange on the end. But it does a better job of insulating the heat than any of the wraps that are commonly used on exhaust pipes nowadays. So let me get back to that question. Do you feel that your 45 blower spinning at whatever RPMs, faster I assume, since you're getting 16 inches of lift, is performing every bit as well as a, uh, whatever, a 4.7? Well, I think it performs better. Better. And the reason, the reason for that is back to the, uh, back to what we were talking about on the blowers. A 47, by design, has to run at less lift than a 45. And the reason for that is it's got the same four inch gears in it. And those gears are what limits the horsepower that you can run through the blower. Okay. So if you have a 45 and a 47, a 45 can always be run at a higher lift level than the 47 can. 47 will have a little more CFM, but it won't have the same lift. So what's more important to carpet cleaners when it comes down to a 150 foot run? Lift. Lift. Without question. Lift is what clears the hose of the water, correct? Well, well lift, lift is what generates the CFM, but our system of carpet cleaning, you have, you know, we 17 inches of lift at the truck, but you're going to lose several inches you're going to lose a couple of inches for uh, you're going to lose at the carpet wand to interface that interface is really where you need the lift you know when the when the wand's sitting on the carpet that's why you have to have a lot of lift is to move a lot of cfm through the wands and we've done some cfm tests on our website and the typical 14 inch the typical 14-inch wand is moving with a good truck mount. Running at 16 inches of lift is should move about 200 CFM actually through the wand. So, Larry, so, when you look at a you know a turbo tile tool, hybrid spinner, whatever, they all have the vacuum brake on the head. So, in theory, that the water's never really you know sitting in the hoses. Do you think that? How, well, how come nobody's ever created a wand with the vacuum brake on the wand rather than back at the machine? Well, because uh, it would never actuate if it was at the wand. You know, oh, what yeah. you have at the wand is less than what you have at your at your truck. So if you were using a truck mount with 50 feet of hose, then you still want this blower protected by a vacuum relief valve at at the blower and if you try to put it at the wand then it would vary according to how many feet of hose you had out to protect the blower why do you say it would never actuate a, a turbo spinner opens up all the time well yeah that turbo is set at a very very low level in fact i i typically tighten those springs down quite a bit when we sell one 
I don't okay. like buttering and losing vacuum. You know, they serve a purpose to keep it from sucking down on a on a solid floor, but that's yeah. about the only purpose they serve. So this machine we're looking at here, you got one muffler on there. Is that your only form of noise reduction, or does the uh, heat exchanger kind of double? Well, that? this this picture is uh, really to point out what we have in our heat exchanger. Our blower exhausts through this stainless steel silencer and enters the heat exchanger down on this end. And we also have our engine exhaust piped into the same manifold and going through the same heat exchanger. And that gives us some big advantages on the heat exchanger. The reason being is that the temperature coming in this pipe is going to be, oh, 400 degrees or so. But the temperature coming in from the blower is going to be about 230 to 240. In this next slide, this is what that gives you when you actually look at the heat generated from the heat exchanger. You have a fairly quick rise up to 230 to 240, which is the temperature of the uh, exhaust from the blower. At that point, the heat, gen the heat level flattens out, and it will still rise, but it rises very slowly from that point. And that's because of the influence of the blower exhaust minimizing that heat rise from that point. The blower exhaust is a lot of CFM that's dumped into that same heat exchanger. And you compare that to a typical diverter system that's used on a lot of truck mounts. It has, it has the same rise time to get up to this temperature, but then the diverter actuates and bypasses that exhaust, which cools it off. And it's going to drop, you know, 20, 30 degrees down to this point. And then the diverter kicks it back on. It's going to have this sawtooth up and down effect from whatever temperature it reactivates at back and forth. So that's why we like to run both the uh, blower exhaust and the engine exhaust through the same heat exchanger. Hey, Larry, I didn't catch on the motors. Are those air-cooled or liquid-cooled that you're mainly using for motors, just out of my curiosity? Well, we've used both. We okay. used uh, we used a 31 horsepower Kohler that was water cooled, mm -hmm. but in our opinion, that 31 water cooled Kohler did not, not stand up to the demands of carpet cleaning as well as the 34 horse Kohler that came out after it and was air cooled. So okay. right now, everything thing we're using is air cooled. Okay. So, Larry, what controls your heat? If uh, you don't have an exhaust diverter and a cleaner gets gabby with a client, he's talking for 20 minutes and answering the phone, what keeps your uh, heat exchanger from popping? Well, once you get up to temperature, you're in, this, you're in this range right here. So you're not seeing a real radical change in temperature. Uh, if, if you do need to stop inside while you're talk, you know, talking to a customer, what we recommend is that they just flip the wand over and let the wand pull in cold air from where they're cleaning. And that tends to cool off the exhaust that's coming out of the blower because the blower's not working as hard as it would be if you flip the wand over and put it under 15 inches again. Now, back in the, I don't know, there's still a couple units out there where if that were was the case you used to crack open that internal pressure line there and feed water into your your vacuum hose is that sort of the same yeah, thing yeah the, there's a couple of ways you can do do it i mean you can you could put a you could put a bypass on a wand but most of our customers don't need to do it you know back to this heat exchanger we've ran this heat exchanger when we were testing this thing it, it has a 3000 pound test and we've run it up to 300 degrees just with the uh, with the engine exhaust and a, and a blower that was cranking out about 20 inches to get more heat. So we've tested this heat exchanger up to about 300. 
Larry, when you do your testing and optimizing and make your claims on heat performance, you're basing it on what flow of WAN? I think the industry 50, standard is six. 50% 50, 50 on, 50% off. Well, that's your keystroke, but what, what flow, WAN flow? Uh, WAN flow, we're, we're at about 1.75 gallons per minute on our testing. And I What's think that's a number. Jet or I think that's jet? a number eight. That's a number eight jet or number oh. two sonar one. So you're going a little higher than the industry. I think all the blue mounts are basing it on either four or six flow. You're basing it on eight. Right. We're basing it on eight flow and saying that the, the one is going to be open 50% of the time. You know, yeah, okay. and it so also it's... depends on pressure. You know, we run it at a pretty high pressure on our units. We're typically spraying at about 525 PSI when the wand is actually actuated and okay. about 570 or so when it's Just describe there what's what's that machine put out heat wise well this is the 22 and a half and this one we write this one at about 210 degrees we we write the uh the larger unit the 34 kohler we write that one at 230 degrees that's that's pretty darn good. Very good, actually. You used one when you were there. You thought it had pretty good heat. Yeah, it was very hot. Um, tell us a little bit about your rubber and isolators there. Okay. Yeah, these are rubber shock mounts. And <clears throat> because we're mounted directly to our tank, uh, we didn't want to transmit vibrations from the engine and the blower to the tank components. So we have a subframe on top of the tank and then we have rubber shock mounts on both sides of the unit that isolate the mounting plate from the uh, from the tank assembly. Larry, what's the price on this? Uh, what, was, what was the model name of this? Three something or other? This is a DC 310 and it's a little over 13,000. What does that include? That includes the uh, that includes the complete unit, a uh, installation, a uh, hose reel, comes with an electric hose reel from your favorite manufacturer. Aerotech. And, uh, and it comes with a, uh, it used to come with a Bentley carbon fiber one. I'm not sure what we're going to be going to now that the new Bentley's out. Uh. But I have more pictures of that for you in a little little bit, Mike. And what, 100 feet of hose? Both yeah, 150, 150 feet of hose and a dual hose reel and uh, installation. That's uh, that's a screaming deal. It is. Yeah, it is. Yeah. All new. I mean, I'm looking here, too, Larry, at the configuration, and I don't, it's been years since I've ran slide-ins, but um, is that water recirculate back into, like, your recovery box or into your fresh tank? I'm just looking at those levers and stuff there. It kind of looks well, these, like it could. Yeah, these levers are controlling which water system you're using. This okay. is a float tank yep. that, where the water comes in, goes through this ball valve and directly to yep. the pump. Okay. And then this back tank, which is this... this freshwater tank in the back, yep. it it comes up through this ball valve. So you can okay. run you can run from the front float tank or you can run from the rear uh, freshwater tank. Okay. And I'm, so I'm does it divert off. water? Uh, you know, if it gets over hot, it doesn't divert water. Am I catching that correct then, Larry? That's that's correct. Nice. You know, one thing okay. Yeah. We tried to do when we we engineered the heat exchanger is, is make it catch water. And mm -hmm. that does take you a little bit longer the first job in the morning to heat it up, but once once you get it heated it retains that heat longer and it also mm -hmm. minimizes the up and down fluctuations you get. Yeah, that's a screaming deal. It is. <laughs> 13, did you say 13 or 13 and a half? That's about 13 and a half. 
Yeah, I'd have yeah. to even look. Okay. So 13 and a half. You get a re you got three reels, both tanks. Hoses. Two reels. Long, two reels. No shelving unit though, right? I'm sorry? No shelving units. No. Wow. But your tanks are there. Uh, uh, yeah. How come you don't publicize and advertise that more, Larry? Well, we do. We're kind of a regional truck mount company, you know. It's <clears throat> it's more difficult to sell. You know, when you to sell a truck mount, you know, out of your state, you need you need some kind of service facilities, and and lots of guys can maintain this machine by themselves because it's it's fairly open. You know, you can get to all the components. You can see where. The water comes into the unit. You can see, you know, it runs through a filter, goes over here to the pump. You can you can troubleshoot this machine pretty easily. So if you have some mechanical ability, you can maintain it yourselves. And that's that's really who buys our unit, a guy that knows how to turn a wrench and wants yeah. to maintain it himself. There's a guy running two of them in Santa Cruz. Yeah. yeah. All righty. Okay, this was this was just a little picture showing the uh, connection to our silencer. You know, this is a silicone high temperature, 500 degree tubing, and we use a uh, clamp system that's uh, a little more robust than uh, some of the typical clamps we see on truck mount systems. This is actually a, a bolt and a wrench type. Uh, mechanism to tighten it up. Why silicone and not some metal? Is that to deal with the vibration? Well, you have to have a little flexibility between these two. This plate, this plate has a little bit of vibration, and this is mounted directly to the heat exchanger. So you need a little bit of give in that in that component. Okay. Now, this is your favorite wand here, Mikey. Well, I don't know. I haven't even seen that one yet. Yeah, this is it. Your manifold is crooked. Yeah, this is the new Bentley. Uh, they incorporated a new slot design, which which they developed on their uh, T Rex T Rex line. I'm T Rex Junior T Rex, and uh, they like the performance of it. We haven't. We haven't used this new head that much yet, so I haven't really developed an opinion. But they have much improved the manifold mounting and the configuration of the jets. It's got you said you have some of those in stock now, Larry? Yep. We got them. Is, uh, the two little brackets holding the manifold, are those like tack welded onto an L bracket or something? What's well, going on there? I'll show you another picture of it in just a second. But this is, this is a stainless steel manifold. And a pretty heavy stainless steel tab on each side that's and then it it screws into a boss you know a casting boss you can see right under the arrow there yeah that that uh, goes into the uh, aluminum casting there is there some sort of a built-in drip system are there uh, stubby valves or whatever you call them inside these jets or I think I think they have stubby valves in them this is something new they've been they've incorporated this is the old Jim Martin trick putting the flow control on there what's the point of that well the point of that is they got a 10 number 10 jet system on this one uh. which is pretty large jets for you know truck mount pressure so they they have the flow control where you can uh, dial it down if you don't want to really flush the carpet is there some kind of a numerical system on there to say yeah. you're at 10 and you're going down to 8 or whatever? It's got like 1 through 10 for for each revolution, and it's a needle valve. It's a very fine-acting valve, so you've got about 20 different steps between open and closed on this valve, and they got numbering system, so you can go back to the same, same uh, setting that you had before. They're using the uh, Westpac valve system easy touch valve system yeah now i saw a picture of this one that had some kind of a sleeve halfway down the long section of the pipe almost making it look like it came apart or something what's yeah, that they, they're touting that as a uh, 
as a means to change the length of the wand. And I don't know how, I haven't gotten the sleeves yet. John said he, they didn't have the sleeves ready when they shipped us these, but we're supposed to be getting the sleeves for them. And I think it's going to work just like the old carbon fiber Bentleys did. It was actually a coupling to go between two sections of the straight pipe, let you make it shorter or longer, depending on what the customer wanted. The coupler was a different length, not the top or lower power pipe. Right. Well, the coupler is, a, you know, the ones we have now are about a foot long, and then you can slide the pipe in all the way to make it, shorter or you can lengthen it to make it a little bit longer hmm. and then this is the swivel assembly on this new wand it's a fairly short short design compared to their old one yeah uh is there any tension on that swivel very little i haven't tried tightening up this uh this nut this packing nut should tighten it up but i haven't played with it that much yet it's got so a braided service this swivel. I don't see any uh, screws or lock rings or anything. Well, this is a this is a large nut right here, and it comes oh, with a special awesome. wrench that fits it. You can okay. tighten it up or loosen it up, but I don't know if it's really designed to tighten it up like like what you were wanting with a detent or a little yeah. friction in it. Yeah. Now, have you ran this in your shop? Just briefly, I haven't run it that much. Can you see what's happening in this window from your perspective of the user? I can see I can see foam in the window. That's all I really noticed using it. You're up high enough that you can see down into it. I've got another picture of the window. Is it more for the homeowner to watch the color of the water coming out or something? Well, you can see it if you were standing over there, but you'd be in the way. Yeah. And what's that made of? Lexan. Lexan. Yeah, it's pretty tough plastic, and it's fairly thick. I haven't, uh, I haven't seen it, you know, the exact thickness, but you can tell it's pretty thick by looking at the edge. And is it uh, just glued into a recession, or is there an O-ring, or what's holding that on? Yeah, it's got a little step, you know, a little step, and then it goes in, and then it comes up. So it it fits in there pretty nicely, and then you glue it glue it into that. And if you broke it, you would just pry that one out and clean it up and glue a new one in? Right. Hmm, interesting. And the plastic wings on there, is there any, could you see any reason why they didn't just continue with the aluminum? I don't, I don't know why they added the plastic wings. I, I don't really think, you know, when you look at the jet pattern on this wand, you know, it doesn't look like this jet is going to overspray enough to, you know, what you always notice is, you know, it hitting the carpet here and then bouncing up, bouncing, yeah. and it will stop that if that does occur. Ah, look forward to using it in Atlanta. That should be uh, interesting. Yeah. Okay. What else you got? Oh, did you say they're making a, a stair wand to this too? They're making a new stair wand that uses a uh, uses their uh, upright valve system did you see the one at ice the year before see any pictures of that one oh, the joystick thing yeah it was like a joystick oh they continue with that well they offer it as an option on this one huh. but john said that that they felt that the original users felt that it was a little bit cumbersome to use when you had to uh swing the wand around or uh, I don't I don't remember exactly how he put it, but something about the uh, you know when you're standing to the side of a wand and actually operating it that it didn't seem to work as well that way. So they went with this conventional wand valve, and they do offer that joystick control as an option, and it's going to be standard on the on the stair tool. Okay. And then this is their. Uh, wand handle, which everybody should be using this handle. No, no matter what wand you have, you should use this handle. You know, they make them in... I saw your buddy Brewster has a, a new handle that's kind of radically different. Um, 
Brister, I saw a photo from the uh, ice show there. It's uh, kind of similar, but it has metal, a metal V to a plastic handle. Yeah. It looks pretty